Alrighty then, Successful Indie Author 5 Minute Focus, Episode 781. Is working hard its own reward? There he is, all tucked in. Yeah, alright, alright. Alright, is working hard its own reward? Now, there's a lot of times you have to work hard at stuff just to accomplish a thing. And that thing might be putting food on the table. So damn right working hard as it has a reward. As an entrepreneur, are you working hard at the right things? This is the biggest question that we have to answer day in, day out. What if working hard nurtures your soul? You've got your day job, which gives you health insurance, which gives you uh, money to pay the rent, to pay your, for, for your food, for your utilities, for your internet, for all the stuff that makes life worth living and life comfortable, because it's nice to have air conditioning in the summer in uh, Phoenix, or heat in the winter in Alaska, those are really nice things to have. So, yes, we work hard to do those things. For me, I worked hard for 20 years so I could uh, have a retirement that would then pay for the basics to make sure that we lived comfortably, comfortably. All right, so it nurtures your soul. What about art? How much art, how much hobby stuff do we do to nurture our soul? What do we do to energize ourselves after we're tired? That's also working hard. And that uh, the value of that cannot be understated as long as it doesn't interfere with stuff that puts food on the table. Because it's hard to make art when you're starving. So don't do that. What if working hard shows how manly you are? Uh, we did a lot of that stuff uh, when I was growing up. We did a lot of that stuff in the Marine Corps. Just work hard to work hard. Look at the football players. I mean, uh, yesterday was Sunday. Football all day, right? <clears throat> And you watch them, and these guys are buff. They're doing incredible things with their body. The speed of the game is just superhuman. They didn't get there by showing up and saying, I'm going to work hard today. No, they've been working hard for years, decades, to get to that point. So all that hard work back then, worth it now. But what about those nine guys out of ten who never made it, who got injured, who did something? Was their hard work worth it? Teaches a certain amount of discipline. But also, it was hard work to do hard work. Maybe they never had the talent, and they worked just as hard as the guy with the talent, but they didn't accomplish. And this is where you have to recognize, am I making progress? If you're making progress, great. If you're comparing yourself against a, a guy who is inevitably going to make it to the NFL, then maybe your progress looks stilted, but it's still progress, and you're improving your body, you're improving your mind, you're improving your self-discipline, you're improving your ability to do other stuff later. Those are good things, but can you reconcile in your own mind the hard work now to achieve something later? That's a challenge. You know, bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, right? That's our mentality of today. So the good thing is you can work both hard and smart. The people who get uh, scholarships to play uh, NCAA sports, men and women both, they go, they're getting their education at no cost. When they get done, they don't have any student loans, but they've got their degree, and they've got the discipline. They've got some, some uh, uh, resume fodder from NCAA sports, and then, oh, by the way, I've got this degree, so I can bring all of that together. Employers like self-discipline. Employers like that degree, that education, and employers like uh, people who are motivated enough and hardworking enough to come over to their team. And then, of course, once you get in the door, all of that goes out the window, and you have to prove yourself once you're there. So working hard, if you're used to it, then you work hard for the right reason. Is it working hard to then move up in an organization? Is it working hard to just work hard? We all have broken a lot of rocks and quarries when they have machines that do that. And this, as an author, when you finally determine, here's what my time is worth when I write, that's when you look at, hey, I'm doing these other things that take two hours, and that's an hour out of my writing time, and how much would I have made if I could have written for an hour? If you're writing a book in uh, 80 hours, 80 of those days where you're losing an hour to something else that's not as productive, what is the value of that? I once calculated my writing time is worth about $250 an hour. So if I'm doing monkey work, which I would describe as, uh, selling books out of my garage where it takes an hour to pack up five, ten packages, how much would I have made if I'd have been writing instead? 
You have to evaluate that time. So working hard, but working hard at the right things. So drop shipping, drop, let somebody else do that that's automated. They've got machines for that. They've got machines that'll break big rocks into small rocks. You don't need to do it with a sledgehammer. And think about your time that way. If you've got the money, because sometimes if you don't have the money to pay for this other stuff, the machine, then you have to do it yourself. So time is the currency you invest in yourself. Understand, working hard takes time. Does it yield the result you need when you need it? Because if you need to be paid now, well, maybe writing for something three months, six months down the road might not be the story, but maybe ghost writing. And I know some people uh, uh, pillory does ghost writing, but you get paid now. You're going to get nothing later, but also you learn to write better. It's a, it's a lot of practice. Some of the I, I know some New York Times bestselling authors who got their start ghost writing. They learned how to write because they wrote for some good people who knew the value, value and quality of story. So working hard to develop your own per, uh, personal uh, experience and your own value of what a great story is and your own discipline to get those words, those are great things. So how do you get there? And if you have a full-time job and you can only write an hour a day and you're jamming, you're teaching yourself good lessons, work hard at the right things, so you can work both hard and smart, and those are the people who are up at the very top of the, the list. Those are the people, even though we don't compete against each other, it's you'll start at the bottom. We all start at the bottom when we first publish, and you climb slowly <clears throat> up, uh, gaining readers. You're climbing because your readers are, are building your readership, and that's when you're working hard at the right things and delivering things in a timely way. So when you invest 80 hours in writing a book, it's a good book, not 80 hours and you throw it away at the end because, hey, this is crap. I just don't like it. Uh, nobody's going to buy it. Don't do that. Write a better book while you're writing. Peace, fellow humans.